What's up, guys? It's Fun for Chu here, and welcome to episode two of the Fun for Chu Fun Cast, where it's double the fun and none of the sass. Hmm, what do you guys think of that intro? One of my good friend and super talented uh, graphic designer, Adrian Arath, gave me that suggestion to call this podcast the Fun Cast because I asked her which one did she prefer, the Fun for Chu podcast or the Fun Cast, and there was actually a good deal on my podcast out there that's called the fun cast and she told me just call it the fun for two fun cast where it's double the fun and it's like yeah that sounds actually really good that was a really good idea actually and why didn't i think of that and that just comes to show you that you can always use the help of a outside perspective when you're working on a project because i wasn't really thinking about that i thought that Huh, it might look weird to have the word fun shown twice, but when saying it out loud, it really flows together and that's really cool. So yeah, officially, this is now called the Fun for Two Fun Cast. And I added the uh, none of the sass, so that was my contribution, I guess, but I think I had to get, give my friend pretty much full credit for this name or name of this podcast. So yeah, I'll be sure to bring her on. If you guys are interested, because she is super cool. Anyway, guys, enough of that. Again, this is episode two of the Fun for Two Fun Cast, and let's not waste any time. Let's begin. So last week, I actually forgot to upload episode one to uh, my Facebook group down part of the Unnatural Talent and the One Hundred, and I'm sure I could have gotten a lot more conversational. Pieces and comments from them if I would have posted that. So this episode will be almost like I'm winging it a little bit. I mean, I did prepare some topics to talk about, but if I would have posted that episode to the Facebook group, I probably could have gotten more conversational pieces out of it. So yeah, sorry guys. I'll be sure to upload this episode and the first episode to those groups. And if you're from the natural Facebook group or the 100. It's super cool that you're listening to this. <laughs> so today, I actually just want to talk about a few things. A little bit about CES, the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. Uh, there's a lot of really cool tech that I want to talk about. Uh, yesterday, apparently, the Nintendo Switch presentation was happening. And it's like, what? I didn't hear anything about this. Or... I must have been really out of tune for the past few weeks to miss it. So I'm going to give you my like reaction and first impression of that. I haven't really done a lot of like research or saw the presentation, but I saw some headlines that really caught my attention. So I want to talk a little bit about that and some more plans for the channel because I was creating some videos and they didn't turn out so well. And I will talk a little bit about that. So... Yeah, so let's start out with CES 2017. There was a lot of cool gadgets like new motherboards, PC builds, TVs, uh, laptops that cost $9,000, which is insane and looks like they it weighed a ton. So I wouldn't actually call that a laptop. So for the first topic, let's talk about CES 2017. There's a lot of cool gadgets that was shown in Las Vegas and some were really cool and some were really bizarre actually. So what really caught my attention was the overall convention was kind of underwhelming because it felt like it was the same iteration but just updated with the latest uh, models of tech. Like they showcased some pretty cool 8K television that was poster thin. But honestly, I was thinking, do you really need an 8K TV that was that thin? Innovation wise, it was really cool. But when it comes to pr practicality and price to performance, like, huh, I'm not really willing to spend that much on it. 8K television, I don't think an 8K television will be that essential for the modern entertainment home system because a lot of people still haven't invested in 4K TVs yet. I mean, there was a good uh, chunk of 
people who actually own 4K TVs, but majority of the market is still using 1080. So having an 8K TV is pretty overkill because not a whole lot of devices can even run 8K TV. Like you need a really powerful high-end PC and even consoles are just now supporting 4K HDR. So, so that was actually pretty interesting to see how a lot of people were interested in 8K TVs this year. One of the cool things that came off CS was the $9,000 Acer Predator laptop that looks like it weighs a ton, like 10 or 12 pounds, and it was pretty humongous from the videos i seen of it. I cannot call that a laptop. That is more like a portable desktop with a monitor, if anything, because it was really the size of half your body, I felt like, or your whole lap. And it's huge. You probably wouldn't even want to place that on your lap. And innovation-wise, it's pretty cool that like, they can fit a legitimate GTX 1060 with a desktop processor, I believe, into a laptop. And it w even had a curved display and was like, huh. That is pretty interesting. I'm not sure who would buy that, but I'm sure there's some portion of the market out there that would want that. But what was more interesting was actually the three monitor display from Razer with their laptop. Even though it's just a concept piece, it's not actually going into market, but it was actually really cool to see that you can fit three monitors in the laptop and it works functionally pretty well. There wasn't a whole lot of real-time testing or footage. It felt like uh, it was pretty generated and it's definitely not on, it's definitely not going to be on sale or anything like that. But that is one thing that would have been pretty interested in if you can have a portable three monitor setup anywhere you go. Even though Razer is primary for gaming, I can definitely see that as a portable workstation for animators and editors to have more room to do their work on. And that was pretty cool to see from Razer. There was a lot less coverage on gaming mouses and other gaming peripherals this year. Other than the NVIDIA Shield TV, I'll get into that later. But I felt like the gaming market is at a point where it's overly saturated with so many gaming peripherals that you really don't need than having like a DPI switcher or a macro keys or shortcuts on the side of the mouses. So it was pretty interesting to see that there was not a whole lot of coverage on gaming mouses in headset this year, or at least from what I've seen so far. I've also noticed that there is definitely less coverage of VR, maybe because it has been officially released, but AR and VR was not really the main point of this year convention. I guess because since Valve and Oculus has been released, they didn't really need to showcase any of that. What was surprising though is that a lot of companies are investing in these portable desktop backpacks so that you can have a more realistic untethered VR experience and that was pretty cool. Again, a lot of these are really in its first generation phase so like all first generation products, it won't be as good as then a second generation, I guess. I guess that really make I guess that makes sense actually. I don't know what I'm saying, but yeah, I actually don't think the VR coverage was actually that interesting this year. Of course, you got your occasional drones and updated cameras like the Lumex GX or GH5, which apparently a lot of people are raving about, which is something to consider since I am interested in getting a DSLR, but I am pretty broke. <laughs> but yeah, that's something interesting. So topic number two is some videos that I was making, like my PC build. As I was making it, the PC cooler I got did not fit on my motherboard. It fits, but really not well at all because the heatsink is actually touching some of the capacitors. I'm definitely going to return that cooler. And it's the Cryo C7. I actually used that cooler before and haven't had any issues, but for this one, for some reason, the 
bracket seems a little bit out of line. So I'm probably now just going to go complete liquid cooling with a Corsair H55, something cheap. But yeah, I can't wait to show you my build. I am using a Intel i7 6700K, which I got for super cheap during Black Friday. And a Z270 Prime motherboard from Asus. And you're probably wondering why am I using a Z170 motherboard and that or a Z270 motherboard and that is because it costs the same as a Z170 motherboard so why not get the newer motherboard that look a lot flashier. So I definitely paid a little bit more on aesthetic than I needed to. And yeah I can't wait to show you my build. It's gonna be my new editing rig because my laptop is slowly dying or at least starting to show its age because rendering these videos and podcasts actually takes a really good bit of time like an hour or so and I really am getting impatience now but yeah that's something I just want to update you guys on on what I've been doing other than just working and work on the comic and other stuff. And I feel like there's not enough time within the day. I feel like I'm being rushed now because I've always been serious in my creation process and try to do so many things. But I feel like I'm not very efficient and not being able to multitask. And so yeah, that's what I just want to update you guys on what I've been doing. Uh, I'm doing my PC build, creating some videos. I wanted to release a video this week because I haven't done a legitimate video in a while. But things keep changing and I guess I kind of want to talk a little bit about that because I spent a lot of time filming stuff and then ditching it because uh, something better came up or a better idea of what I could do. And right now that's kind of been a negative thing because it's making me less productive so I'm trying to figure out what I can do to better spend my time or better plan things out because I'm always in the planning phase but not in the doing phase right now and hopefully that doesn't sound like I'm like super inefficient or anything it's just a feeling I get so there is a lot of pressure that I'm putting on myself to create more regular content for you for the YouTube channel and this podcast and I really want to make it a success and get this 10,000 subscriber goal that I have for this year anyway and that's about it for that story there was a third topic but I kind of forgot what I was going to talk about so I'm just gonna ramble on a little bit so yeah I definitely want to upload these podcasts to the Facebook group because I'm sure there's going to be a lot of more conversational pieces that I can have for the podcast and you guys will be interested in other than me just talking on and on. So yeah, I definitely need your help uh, in pushing this podcast along. So be sure to tweet at me using the Fun for True Funcast and to the Facebook group that I'm a part of. It'd be super awesome if you guys could give me advice or critique this podcast or give me conversational pieces to talk about. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of rooms for improvement in this case. So the next topic I want to talk a little bit about is the Nintendo Switch presentation, which happened last night or Thursday night, depending on when this podcast is released. And it's super cool that Nintendo has rebranded its whole line of video game it's gonna be the same we're still gonna get the same like mario games zelda games but i really think nintendo is gonna make a comeback with the nintendo switch it is a cross between the mobile tablet uh market and the console market because the the nintendo switch you can actually take it with you anywhere and use it as a gaming tablet or as a mobile tablet with controllers on the side that you can take off and play with other people on one screen. And that's a really cool setup. That's really interesting, I think. And you can then dock that tablet into a docking station onto TV to get a uh, better performance and play a better resolution game, I think. Again, I haven't saw the presentation. I'm just looking at headlines. Uh, it was pretty late last night. I guess they was using Japan time, which is, I guess, nighttime here. And I was super tired at work. 
but it is super cool to see some Zelda games and Mario games coming out. I'm not a big Nintendo fan other than the my experience is my childhood playing the Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games and some DS and 3DS games. So I haven't really invested in any of the Nintendo console actually. So this is something to consider even though I am flat broke and can't really afford it. And I'm more interested in Persona 5 coming out for the PS4 and PS3. Or I probably would get PS4 f- for Persona 5 to get that better resolution and game performance. But it's super cool that Nintendo is making a comeback from the Wii U. Which unfortunately due to general population it is considered a failure because it only had a two year lifespan with very very limited games and games that have been postponed so that they can be ported over to the Nintendo Switch and get more money out of it that way. So yeah I'm super hoping that Nintendo will make a huge comeback and become a successful company like they did back in the 2090s especially back in the Wii generation because they sold millions of Wiis and I think a lot of uh, casual gamers will like the Nintendo Switch where they can take it around with them anywhere they go. Alrighty guys that about does it. Thanks for listening and watching. Let me know in the comments and tweet at me if you guys like the name Funcast or the Fun of Two Funcast because I really like that name. <laughs> And I just want to say thank you to my friend Adriana that it was pretty much her credit that she gave me that. Again, if you have any comments and suggestions or topics for the podcast, you guys can tweet at me on Twitter using the hashtag FunCast. That'd be super awesome. As always, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Snapchat. I'm fun for you. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye! Whoops, I guess after post editing and all that stuff, I still have about three to four minutes left to end this podcast. So here is episode two of the Fun for Two Funcast epilogue. So if you managed to actually kept listening to the very end, you probably noticed that this episode was not uploaded on Friday last week. Yeah. Dang, it's so hard to get back into gear when you are off so long and i super sorry that my schedule has been really off but I'm working on trying to produce more regular content for you guys and that's right now for some reason has been a struggle and there are reasons why things are not going as smoothly as before when I was able to produce like almost two videos a week for like the past month or a month and a half if you guys were around for that time period and yeah I'm definitely trying to push out better quality content at a more regular pace again I'm super sorry that I'm not uploading as regular as I promised you guys that I would be and yeah I just definitely need to figure out what is the issue and what I need to sacrifice or give up if I really want to put 100% effort or 120% effort into this YouTube thing for 2017. And I really want to hit that 10,000 subscribers mark. And I know that numbers shouldn't be a main objective when you want to create your own content, but it's nice to have that kind of big goal in mind when trying to create the content that you want to do or at least the content that I want to do because number one for me is that I make the videos that I will actually like to watch or at least like making and just share it with you guys and if somehow I get a enough viewerships and subscribers down the road that's really cool but yeah I guess that is a bit contradictory if one, I set a goal for myself to hit that number and two, still focus on the content that I want to make. Hmm, yeah, that is quite a conflict. 
Anyway, guys, thanks for listening. Again, this is episode two of the Fun for Shoe Funcast epilogue series. If you manage to stick to the end, that is. Anyway, as always, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Snapchat. I'm Fun for Chew. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.